Welcome to Faith United Methodist Church. My name is Mike Cassidy. I am the pastor here. It is my joy, my privilege, and my honor to welcome us into worship on this, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost and Labor Day weekend. It is a privilege to be able to worship with you, to pastor you wherever you are. I'm thankful that you have chosen to worship with us here at Faith. And we pray that you find your place, your purpose, and your passion in Christ Jesus during your time with us today and in the days to come. As we begin this worship service, I want to remind you we are beginning a new sermon series and we're going back to the beginning, back to the very first chapter in the book of Genesis. Genesis 1 and the first account of creation in our Holy Scriptures. I pray that you come along with us that in this time of new beginnings, of a new school year, and new realities, um, and, 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 and chaos, and unrest all at the same time, that this might be a time to reorient ourselves, to reset our lives, and to return our hearts to Jesus. So as you join us, we join alongside you in prayer for new and greater things to come. And I also invite you to join us in the next stage of our reading plan as we read the Bible together. Our daily readings are available at the church. We'll also post them on the website at valleyfaith.church. You can find a PDF form of our daily readings there. And also we'll put some JPEGs here on our uh, Facebook page uh, where you can also download an image and read along with us in our daily readings that will lead us through and to the scriptures and the worship on Sunday. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds. We're going to open this worship with some prayer. We're going to go to the Cassidy family. I know them. They're pretty well. One of them's shady, but we're going to go to John Cassidy. He's going to open us in prayer today. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Grant us, O oh Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For, as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. It is good to worship with you, to have you here with us. Let's go to a greeting time. What I want to do is invite you, just in the comment section below, to type this word. It is the Sabbath. It is Labor Day weekend. Let's type REST, R-E-S-T, in all caps, so we can remind one another on this, the Lord's Day, to take some time to just rest in Christ's arms. I'll see you back here in just a moment. And now let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Liz and I are going to lead us in a call to worship. And then we've got a good number of our music team here at Faith, some different people that are going to lead us in hymns and in song. And Lily's going to lead us in scripture. And I want to invite you, the words to all of these are going to be on your screen. All of the hymns and the, and the call to worship, wherever you are, speak out loud, share in this liturgy and in these songs that we might be together and united in voice, even as we are divided by geographical distance. And finally, let us prepare our hearts as we welcome in the light of Christ. Please join me by sharing in the call to worship on your screen. There's a time for everything. And a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born. And a time to die. A time to mourn. And a time to dance. A time for peace. And a time for praise.
attention in our hearts to God's word. This is Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Let us pray. Lord God, we do thank you for your grace, for the mercy that you show all of us beyond anything we could deserve or ever earn. Your grace goes before us always. Just as your grace has entered into this space, prepared a place for each and every one of us to dwell with you and in your Holy Spirit. And so we praise you and your holy name on this day, your day, 
the day of your son, Jesus Christ's resurrection. Every Sunday, Lord God, is a little Easter. And so today, we praise you for resurrection and for new life and new opportunities. And God, in this time of doubt, in this time of fear and of struggle and of chaos, Lord, just as you did at creation, might you make order out of the chaos of our lives. Might you, Lord God, make order out of the chaos of our world. May you, Lord God, mend our broken hearts, mend our broken world, heal us from our illnesses and our sicknesses and our doubts and our fears. Help set us once again on the right path, on your path as we follow your Son, Jesus Christ. So today, Lord God, as we journey back to the very beginning, in the beginning was you, God. And so here we are today with you, God. Come into our hearts. Come into our lives. Speak truth and life, mercy and grace, love and faith and hope and all things good. Breathe life on us again. Breathe your Holy Spirit. And may we follow your Son, Jesus Christ to a new life in you and a renewed life in you. Your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to live, who taught us to love, and who taught us to pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. I want to remind you, we are a praying congregation, and if you'd like to be in prayer alongside us, if you would like to receive our weekly prayer requests, you can just let Julia Houston know at admin at valleyfaith.church, and she will get you on the email list to receive those prayer requests. Usually they go out on Tuesday mornings. If you have a prayer request, a joy, or a concern that you would like to share with us, again, you can email admin at valleyfaith.church. If they're marked general, that goes out to all of those who've asked to be on that prayer list. If you mark that they are confidential, you can say care team only or pastor only. Our care team is a small group of about six people. We meet on Tuesdays and pray over each and every one of those prayer requests and then spend the week in prayer alongside you. Also, I want to remind us that we are begun, the school season has begun again, and we've been praying for different schools in the area each and every week. This week, it's Lucy Franklin Elementary School over in Blue Springs. We want to invite you to be in prayer alongside us for the teachers, the students, the staff, and the families that are a part of that educational community, that they might feel the Spirit move within them in this time, showing them a safe and a healthy and a happy way forward as they do their work, raising up the next generation. Speaking of raising up the next generation, I want to thank you for all the ways that you give and support the ministry here at Faith United Methodist Church. Today, I just want to highlight the wonderful work that our youth director and children's director, Randy Draper and Katie Carate, have been doing, even as things are not at all like we had planned or anyone had planned. They've been doing some amazing work keeping us connected using the different means possible. Randy has begun meeting with the youth again outside, taking advantage of the open air and the safe distances that they can do. And, and Katie, we're gonna go to her in just a moment as she shares about an exciting new venture for our children's ministry as we move into the fall and we're still doing some social distancing as our kids learn to become lamp lighters. This is, those are just a couple of things that your tithes, your offerings help us to do as a church as we also give back to the community of Grain Valley. And now in this time, I want to invite in our bell choir digitally is going to provide us an offertory. And I want you to take this time to give your hearts and minds to Jesus Christ once again today. If you'd like to donate during this time too, there's a link up in the program notes, the video notes here on Facebook and YouTube. You can click that and give digitally. Thanks so much.
now it is time to head over to Katie Curarte, our children's director, um, as she gives us our kids moment for this week. Like I said, we're starting a new venture in the children's ministry life of this church, and I can't wait for you all to hear about it. So Katie. Hi kiddos and faith families. It's so great to be here with you on this Sunday morning. And I'm so excited because today we are kicking off our new theme. And this theme is going to take us all the way through until December when we start doing Advent for the Christmas season. So it's going to be a couple months and our theme is going to be called Be the Lamplighters. And I'm so excited about this because I was thinking about what would be good and what would be something exciting that we could talk about for a few weeks. And I think that right now we could all use a little extra light. We could all use um, a little more happiness and just light up other people's worlds and our worlds. And remember that God is our light. He is shining every day. And I'm going to be encouraging you to think about ways that you can shine and you can illuminate the way for others in your life. So today I just wanted to give you a little introduction to what we're going to be doing. So we're going to have a different scripture every week that we talk about. And our Kids Connection is coming back on Wednesday nights. And we're going to be sharing with a different family from the church every Sunday after they have participated on Wednesday nights. So it's gonna be a Wednesday, Sunday connection. Gonna be really fun. Um, so I wanted to give you a little bit of history about what a lamplighter was. In the 1900s, if you went outside at night, you wouldn't see streets with uh, lights <laughs> all down the street like we have now. You see uh, lights in the parking lots on your street when you go out and walk at night. But back in the 1900s, it wasn't like that. If you wanted to have a street light, it was a gas lamp and lamp lighters went out every night and they lit the lamps so that other people could see and they could feel safe and it kind of brought some joy and cheeriness to the neighborhoods and streets and it illuminated the night and the dark for others. So these people were called lamp lighters or they were also called Learys. If you've seen the new live action Mary Poppins, you might have heard the Leary song. So that's a little bit of history on what a lamplighter was. And that's kind of what we're gonna be challenging you kiddos to do is be the lamplighter, illuminate the dark. And I'm really excited um, to share in this journey with you guys. And our first Bible verse up here is from the book of Psalms. And it is thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I think that's a great Bible verse to kick this off with. So we are gonna be inviting your families to share with us and participate um, in this new series that we're doing. And every family in the congregation is gonna be getting a little gift bag this weekend with some back to school treats and just a little excitement for you to kick off our new series. So I'm gonna say a quick prayer and then I will see you on Wednesday night. So dear Jesus, thank you so much for all of our families and all of our kiddos. And I would pray that you please be with everyone as they're going back to school and starting these new adventures, that you would be in our hearts and light the way for us and give us energy and strength that we can light the way for others in our lives. And thank you for all of our blessings. In Jesus name, amen. Well, this weekend is Labor Day weekend. It's the start of a new calendar year. If you're involved in the school system in any way, or if you have family in the school system, this time of year always feels like the beginning of a year, of a new year. And I don't know about you, but every time I start something new, be it a new year or a new week, I feel like that's the perfect time to reinvent some part of myself. I don't always follow through on that, but it seems like the perfect time to reinvent myself or do something I know I should be doing or want to do 
uh, but haven't gotten the strength or courage to do it. But I do feel like this year we could all use a little reinvention. We could all, and by all I mean the, 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 the world right now, could use a bit of a restart. I feel like the world has gotten off track, and it feels like if the world has gotten off track, it feels like in the United States, we, we done just lost the track. Like, it's so far away right now, we can't even see where it's gotten to, or where we've gotten ourselves to. To use another metaphor, it's like 2020 done just jumped the shark. We, we're, we're adrift, and so I think this is a perfect time to take a collective breath to slow down and start over. So literally, we're going to go back to the beginning, not just of 2020, nice as that would, have, would be, but to all of creation. And it's my hope that over the four next, week, four, next four weeks, as we hang out in Genesis and the story of creation, that we might see ourselves and our place in God's universe in a new and perhaps brighter light. And so, for the sake of seeing old things in a new light, I'm going to read the story of creation the first story, all of it, 1-1 one, one through 2-3. And all I want to ask of you is to just listen. Um, even as I'm starting a new Bible study, we started last Wednesday, y'all are invited at uh, noon on Facebook in our Valley Faith Facebook group. Even as I'm starting a new Bible study, though, I'm reminded of our tendency to read and dissect and analyze Scripture and we're so used to doing that, I think there are times where it's good just to hear God's Word. The way it was intended, if we remember, especially the Old Testament, our written scripture tradition was originally an oral tradition meant to be heard. So I want to invite you to sit back, rest, and join me on a seven-day seven journey. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seeds in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let there be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, and it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. 
God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water and the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds and livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish and the sea and the birds and the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And then, God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth, and all the birds in the sky, and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. And thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. And by the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And then God blessed the seventh day, made it holy. Because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. And that is the story of creation that is the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God and it was all I can do to get to the end of that scripture and not make note of the fact that our neighbors were playing nappy roots it's gonna be a good day as I kept saying and it was good and the sixth day and it was good and it was the sixth day the nappy roots knew what was gonna happen with the scripture so they came to sing to us let's pray Lord God, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you and praise you. Thank you for the music that you make all around us, Lord God. The music of the birds, of the air, the fish of the sea, the animals of the land, and the neighbors in the pool. We thank you for the ways it reminds us of you. The joy that is to be found in you and in your creation. Let us hear you speak to us. By whatever means you use, Lord God, let us hear your word today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I know that was a long bit of scripture, and I hope I didn't lose you. And I hope you began to hear something. I hope that you began to hear those repetitions and those rhythms. You see, in the West, I think we've done a great disservice to the creation account in Genesis 1. We've tried to turn it first into a story with a distinct beginning, middle, and end as if things happened, had to happen in this narrative way. And we've forgotten that it isn't a story. Genesis 1 is a poem. It's poetry. We've turned it into a series of facts for our kids to memorize to prove that they love Jesus. Timmy, what's the first day of creation? Light. What's the second day? Sky. What's the third day? Land, seas, plants, trees. What's the fourth day, everybody? Oh, y'all don't love Jesus, see? You don't know what happened on the fourth. It's the fourth day is the big one, sun, moon, and stars, the seasons. And I don't, I'm still trying to puzzle out how um, God made plants and how they grew before there was a sun to give them, to give them chloro, chloro, chloro stuff. <laughs> Chlorophyll. There you go. <laughs> I like chloro stuff. And the fifth day, sea creatures. The sixth day, dry land and us. And on the seventh day, God made lazy boys. So he could rest, and so can we. But by memorizing and studying and examining each day individually, what happened on this day and this day, we start to spend so much time looking at the trees that we forget that this is a forest. That Genesis 1 is a forest, not just a series 
of individual trees, of individual days. And finally, the creation story of our Christian faith and of our Jewish ancestors has been ravaged by the tyranny of biblical literalism that was a delay. It is a byproduct of this scientific revolution that everything must be science. We have to fight back with our faith against science by turning our faith into science. It's not science, it's faith. And so we started to ask, what does Genesis 1 tell us about the facts of creation? Instead of just doing as the writers did, standing in awe and wonder at what Genesis 1 reveals to us about the Creator about the truth of God. And it's a truth that is beyond our scientific minds that no amount of logic and reason can capture. And so we're back to the fact that the only way to capture what happened in the beginning is through poetry. It's written in the language of metaphor and repetition, symbolism and meter. The only way to truly appreciate and truly understand the verses in Genesis 1 are to hear them all together as a whole like we've just done. It's like Genesis 1, it takes its main theme, those, that first sentence, it takes that main theme and just spins it out beautifully and poetically and creates this space through the coming verses where we can all just dwell, where we can all just rest, where we can all just take in what God has done. And the main theme, it's right there in the first three, four words of this poem, in the beginning, in the beginning what? God. In the beginning, God. Let's just stop there for a moment. We'll rest right there. In the beginning, God. I mentioned we're going to go back to the beginning of these four weeks as we look at creation. So what a beautiful place to begin. Those four words are really all we need. In the beginning, God. As we restart and reconfigure and reinvent our lives this fall, where should we start? You start in the beginning. Where should our beginning be? God. Always. In the beginning, God, whatever you start, even if you're just starting a coffee, in the beginning, God. How many of us, if you're like me anyway, have a habit of getting our mornings and our days off to a bad start, off on the wrong foot? Whether you're like me and you, you tend to just wake up just in time, which just in time is never really on time, just in time typically is late. And so you begin your day in a frantic race to catch up. Or maybe you begin worrying about the end. You wake up fretting something that's going to happen much later in the day. So you don't even acknowledge the beginning. You jump straight to the middle or the end. You mentally and spiritually skip over the beginning of your day. Or maybe you wake up wanting to be anywhere but here. And so you escape into work and busyness or video games or alcohol. But we don't even have to get past the first sentence of the Bible to know where we should begin our days, where we should begin our new adventures and renewed commitments, where we should begin everything. In the beginning, who? God. In the beginning, God. It all starts with, everything starts with God. And we would be, do well to remember that in all we do. 50 is a new beginning. In the beginning, God and David. And I know you might be saying, wait a minute, why, why are you talking about waking up in the morning and starting your day? I thought Genesis 1 was about creation. Well, fine. Here's the deal. If you add one word to that phrase, you just go to the next word in the verse, in the beginning, God. That's all you need to know about creation. It's the heart of what Genesis tells us. In the beginning, God, what, what's next? God created. In the beginning, God created. That's it. That's really all we need to know. In the beginning, God created. That's all we need to believe. In the beginning, God created. The rest of Genesis 1 is just variations on a theme, poetic derivations and celebrations of God's creative majesty. And there are also four great words, by the way. If you ever get in one of those ridiculous arguments over or those false debates where it's evolution, creation, and science, and God, and faith. So someone comes at you and is like, well, what, what about the other stars, and the other planets, and the other life, and the other galaxies, and the other people? You Christians don't believe in the other planets, do you? And I say, well, yeah, that's fine. I believe in Jupiter. I believe in the Andromeda galaxy and the potential for life in other places, but I also believe that in the beginning it was God who created those other places. In the beginning of, of statistically possible other people on other planets, on other galaxies, in the beginning God created. 
But what about the earth being three billion years old and the universe being older still? Don't you Christians believe that the earth is only like 3,000 years old? I said, nope. I don't know how long this has all been here. All I do know is that at the beginning of when it was here, God was, or rather, God is. In the beginning, whenever that was, God created. And my favorite, what about dinosaurs? What about dinosaurs? I mean, they're scary looking, they make for good movie plots, and in the beginning, God created them too. And if I learned anything from Jurassic Park, it's probably that we shouldn't try to go recreating them ourselves. Just a tidbit of wisdom there. And if it was good enough for creation and for the Andromeda galaxy and for dinosaurs, it's good enough for us. Where should all of our beginnings be? With who? God. In the beginning, God. See, I just gave you all a mem memory verse. Right there. Theology, one-on-one, -on -one, 101. In the beginning, God what? Created. Let's all say that together. In the beginning, God created. Boom. Theology. You got it down. You know all about creation. Mission accomplished. Now here, a question for you though. How did God create? Well, we know the Spirit was there hovering with all His creative energy, spark, and power over the waters. And then God did what? God spoke. God said, let there be light. God spoke words. God spoke the Word. And the Word was there. The Word who was God and was with God. The Word is Jesus. Jesus and the Spirit and God the Creator all there at once. And God said, let there be light. And with that phrase, and God said, the poetry of Genesis 1 hits us again. And God said, and God said, each and every day. And God said, and God said, it's poetry, it's repetition. Except the seventh day, God didn't speak. What did he do? He rested. It's always important, by the way, when a phrase changes in a poem. If it's repeated and repeated and repeated and it changes, that's important. That's why we're going to come back to that later in the month. There's another phrase that gets repeated and repeated and repeated. And it was good. And it was good. And it was good. And then eventually it changes again. And it was very good. We're going to talk about that another week also. But there's one more as we close out our time today, there's one more repeated phrase that I want to look at. It happens on every day of creation. Again, except for the seventh day. We'll come to that again. There was evening and there was morning the first day. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. I could go on and do it three more times, but you get my point. It repeats and repeats. But does anything seem off to you guys about that phrase? And there was evening and morning, and that was a day. And there was evening and morning, and that was a day. What's wrong? It's backwards, right? It's backwards from how we experience the world. Do we experience, our, do we begin our days with the evening? No, when do our days begin? No, in the beginning it's God. Our days begin with God. See, that was a test from earlier in the beginning. No. no, our days begin where? When we wake up. In the morning, what is this business about there was evening and then there was morning? No, we begin our days when we wake up. In the beginning, I woke up. But that's not biblical time. Even for our military people, they tell us that the, the day begins at what time? Midnight. At, at zero. The day begins at zero. And then you count up. That's way easier than us with the AMs and the PMs. Right? But that's our Roman heritage. Did you all know that? That's when that started. In ancient Rome that the day began at zero, midnight to midday, midnight. The work day began at sunup to sundown, but the Jews went sundown to sundown. Jesus' people saw a day as happening from sundown to sundown. That's why, um, that's why Nate was here. We went to the synagogue two years ago, right? And we went on a Friday night, but technically we, when we went on a Friday night, it was already the Sabbath. It was already Saturday for the Jewish people worshiping on what we thought was Friday night because the sun had gone down. So the Sabbath had begun. Saturday had started, to use our terminology. So our spiritual heritage looks back and says, wait a minute. The day begins not in the morning. The day begins at night. Now, my, 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 my Roman mind says Saturday does not begin on Friday night. Saturday begins when the Smurfs come on on Sunday morning or Saturday morning. Saturday morning cartoons marks the beginning of a day. But it got me thinking, what would happen if we switched our thinking? 
from the Roman thinking, if we switched how we do this back to a Genesis way of thinking, if we go back to the beginning, if we restart and reconfigure our lives, what if our days started at sunset? I mean, think about the implications. Our day does not begin with us waking up and preparing for work, preparing to do, preparing to go, worried about what we have to do to be productive, worried about what we have to accomplish to be worth something. No, our day begins when the sun goes down. Our day begins when we rest in the arms of God. When we find our worth not in doing, but in simply being children of God. When our days begin at the beginning, because in the beginning, what? God. In the beginning, God. In our beginnings, God. And then let's, hold up, now let, let, let's explode this out just a little bit. If our days begin as sundown with God, where does our week begin? Well, our work week begins when? Monday. Our school week begins when? Monday, unless your name happens to start with K through Z, then technically it begins on Tuesday in COVID school. But no, our work weeks, our lives in, 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 in civil, civil society, in, in secular society, are oriented around this Monday begins the day, and we're just trying to make it to begin the week, and we're just trying to make it to Friday. But when does the, the church week start? When does our Christian week start? It begins with, well, we just went through creation on Saturday, the seventh day of creation. What happened? God rested. So that's the seventh day, Saturday. That's why it's the Sabbath. So the eighth day, the first day, is what day? Sunday. The Lord's day. So the beginning of our week, in the beginning, comma, who? God. And what if we start to see our weeks again and begin where God begins us in the beginning, God? We begin on Sunday, the Lord's Day, the day of the resurrection, the day of new creation, the first day of life with a resurrected Christ. At sundown, in the beginning, God. On Sunday, in the beginning, God. And finally, we are beginning a new school year, and some of us, anybody here, purchase an academic calendar. An academic calendar does not begin when we think the new year begins in January 1st. An academic calendar begins when? August. When I was a kid, it started September. But now it's August, right? An academic calendar. Anybody here in the financial or business world, do you have a financial calendar? And that begins when? July 1st. That's the beginning of the fiscal year. July 1st, or if you work for the government, the fiscal year starts October 1st. New Year, January 1st, July 1st, October 1st, August 1st. When is it? Well, when is it for Christians? This year is November 29th. The Christian New Year begins the first Sunday of Advent, has begun the first Sunday of Advent for centuries. Our calendar is different. As Christians, our calendar should be different. The first Sunday of our year is the beginning of Advent as we look forward to the birth of Christ. And the Christian year takes us through Easter, through his teachings, through his wanderings, all the way to the last Sunday of the year in the Christian calendar is Christ the King Sunday when we look to that day when Christ is King and reigns over a new earth and a new creation. The Christian calendar starts with the birth of Christ, God in flesh, in the beginning, God. So I think it's no wonder sometimes that the world feels so disorienting. It's no wonder that it's so easy to slip away from our faith. Maybe it's no wonder that we get our faith confused so often with our civil politics and our fiscal politics and our educational politics because what we're doing is we're flipping the wrong calendars. We're starting on the wrong day. We're, we're, we're beginning our day at the wrong time. We have forgotten that we as Christians are different. That we are set apart. We've forgotten that we as Christians see the world differently, experience the world differently, and at the heart of it, we as Christians mark time differently. And so if, like me, you long for a restart, if you long to reorient your life, to get back on track, to find the track, 
If you long for renewal and rebirth like I do, I want to ask you to join me back at the beginning. Start your days at, at sundown. Find your worth at sundown with God. I want to give you a challenge this week. Pray your good morning prayer before you go to bed. Sing, this is the day that the Lord has made as a lullaby. Start your days with God. Start your week on Sunday. Find your worth on Sunday with God. In the beginning, God. And start getting ready now for the new year where you're going to make your new year resolution, where you're going to buy your new calendar and flip to day one of the new year on November 29th. The beginning of Advent in the beginning, God. We live differently, or rather, we're called to live differently. We're called to be different. So maybe by marking time differently, we can begin to be different people, to be children of God once again. You know, the early Christians, um, they, would, they were Jewish. So on Saturday, they would observe the Sabbath. They would go to synagogue, just like everybody else. And then on Sunday, they would go to work. But then, they would gather to remember the new beginning that happened on a Sunday. A few months, a few years before they gathered, those early Christians. And they would remember, right? They would remember that Jesus had stood with the disciples and he looked it up at bread. He said, this is my body broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you eat of this, remember who you are. Every time you gather and you eat, remember. Because it's so easy to forget. It's so easy to go to Office Depot and buy the calendar that everybody else is buying. But when you take this bread in, you will remember. And mark your week. Mark your week. Not just every now and again. As often as you can, remember. And he lifted up the cup and he said, This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And every time you drink of this, remember. 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 You know, as Christians, to varying degrees and to different degrees, we get out of the habit of taking communion because it doesn't fit the civil calendar, right? We're looking at the wrong calendar because on the Jesus calendar... It says, hey, remember, remember, remember. And when we go to our academic calendars and our fiscal calendars and our January 1st calendars, it's not on there. So may today be a day to remember. It's a great time to reorient and restart our lives in what better place than right here at the table. So let me pray a blessing and then let us share in communion together. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for the reminders always of where we are to go, to whom we are to return. Thank you for coming and getting us in the form of Jesus, your son, saying, come, follow me back to where you're supposed to be. Let's try this again. Come with me to the table. Taste of this bread. Drink of this wine. Remember that you are mine. So Lord, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on this bread and this cup, that they might become for all of us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that as we take you in this night, that we might be changed, that we might be renewed and reoriented to you. And that it might just not be a moment, but that we might return to you each and every day. That we might return to you each and every Saturday and or Sunday that we might return to you each and every year that begins not in January, but with Advent, as we prepare our hearts for your birth and for your coming reign on heaven, in heaven as it is, on earth as it is, in heaven. There we go. God, in all things, we look to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Grim.
I don't know how this works, but the sun has nearly gone down, so it's a new day. May it be a new day in each and every one of our lives. Um, and it is now the Lord's day, I guess. It is now Sunday. It is now a new week. May this be the beginning of a new life for you all in Christ. And may we go in newness and in love. And always in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.